Hi folks, Jack Spirigo here with the next video in the Permaculture Series. Today we're going to talk about terraces and kind of the unique, easy way to build terraces in this episode. Then in the next episode I'm going to come back and kind of give you an X factor to go with it, to really kind of turbocharge it. I decided to do this on terraces because I had some people asking, well all the work we've done lately on swales, is a swale a terrace? Or is a terrace a swale? And the answer is yes and no. They are because they have certain things that are functionally similar, but they're completely different in other ways. What I mean by that is, you know, this is the makings of a terrace, and I'll explain this in a second. But let me draw a typical way we think of terracing. We've got a hill coming down, like this, and we bring a piece of equipment in, and we cut a flat spot into the side of the hill, and then we have a terrace. This is a typical way terraces are done. It's, it's not what I want to really talk about with you today. I want to talk about an easy way to do it, especially in an area where you have a lot of rocks by building up instead of cutting in and down. Um, and I want to kind of give you some scale on this. So you see these little hash marks across here at the bottom? These are one foot, uh, based on that being one foot. So it's not a super to scale thing, but basically I measured that with my fingers and said, okay, there's a foot. So we've got about 12 feet represented here with a rock pile that would be about 14 to 16 inches tall. So I don't want you to think we're talking about a giant pile of rocks. And this is a simple way to build terraces. And I'm going to tell you how to get creative using A-frame levels to do this and make it super simple and super accurate. Um, an A-frame level, for those that are maybe not familiar with it, is a simple structure. We put two pieces of wood in the shape of an A. We put a cross member across it like a big A. And I'll use red for the string so it'll stand out apart. We hang a string down and we put some sort of a weight on it. The way we calibrate it's really easy. We take a known level surface, so we get basically a piece of 2x4 or 2x8 or something like that. We set it on the ground, we shim it, we check it with a regular builder's level, and when we get it perfectly level, we take the A-frame level and we sit it on there. Even if it's not perfect this way or that way or the cross member, it's going to still be on a level surface. The string is going to hang perfectly level to the center of the earth. We're going to mark where the string hangs on the cross member. We'll flip it around for a little bit of calibration. We'll mark it the way when it's when it's when you so you just take the whole level and flip it around and mark another line. The two lines will be just a tiny bit, almost a string's width apart usually. That dead center line, that's your level line that you use. So you walk that A-frame level out. So what we might have done here is we picked an area, let's say 40 feet long, and we go and we take our A-frame level and we mark with flags or stakes a level contour line. Then we come back, we take our rocks, and we just place our rocks on our contour line. Now we know the rocks are level, right, because we just put them on the place that we've leveled with the A-frame level. So now all we have to do, and this red line here represents this, is just start filling this in. And if this is a foot deep, then this is about 6 inches deep, and it'll tail off here at about 12 feet, and then we end up with a terrace. Now, when is this a good idea? If I have lots of rocks laying around, and I have a good source of fill, and I'm not building too large of a structure. If this here, instead of a foot deep, was five feet deep, we need a tons and tons and tons and tons of fill, literally, to fill this in. But something like this, especially on, let's say, a 10 or 20 or 30 foot terrace, we need relatively modest amounts of full, especially, fill, especially if we can get good quality fill, either from another location or something like that. And there's some things we can do here. But I want to talk about kind of the best areas for this. An area with a pitch like this, not a good place to do a terrace like that. We're going to really have to get the equipment out and start cutting into the side of the, the, the mountain to do that, so to speak, because we need a lot of fill to compensate for that. The lower or the more shallow the slope, the longer we'll be able to come back at the same relative height. And what I mean by that is if I have a 1 inch and 12 foot fall, right, so if every 12 feet it's this way, it's only one inch lower, I could come back off of one foot 144 feet this way. This is done to, you know, with my drawing, not quite the scale, about 12 inches. I was going to put one foot, but I figured it might be confusing. At one foot and 12 feet, so 12 feet away, it's exactly one foot lower. That's a pretty steep slope. I'll come back 12 feet. It's, it's that simple. So this would be a 12 foot structure here. If I had uh, 6 inches of fall over 12 feet, I'd come back about 24 feet or twice as far. And my tail back here, this narrow part, will get more and more accentuated. 
So I've got this really high quality deep fill that I've brought in here. And back here, I don't have so much of this high quality fill that I've brought in. But if this is good soil down here, it's not that big a deal. So it's all dependent. But the beauty that I get here, even on this, which is a fairly steep drop, um, 12 inches and 12 feet, that's one inch per foot. That means you go this far, you're an inch lower. You go two feet, you're two inches lower. So it's a pretty good drop. Even at that, um, I can get back to 12 feet by going a foot deep. And I could do a four-foot bed, a two-foot path, and a four-foot bed if I was doing standard kind of contour garden beds in there, right? So that'll work. Now, how can I really start to turbocharge this? And before I go forward, again, I want to reiterate how simple this method is. I take my A-frame level, I make a contour line, I put my rocks, and I come back. Now, if I want to do this really accurately, what I'll do is I'll come right here, and I'll tie a string. I'll put a stake in the ground just in front of the rocks at one foot or 8 inches, or 10 inches, or 16 inches. Remember guys, I'm not giving you dimensions so you'll use them. It's based on whatever you want. I will take a string, and I will drag this string back until it hits the ground, and I will put a little tool on this string here, like this, like that, a line level. It's a little plastic tool that costs about 2 bucks. It's about that big, and it goes onto a string, and has a little bubble level in it. And wherever the ground is touched back here, and then anywhere along this line, I put that level, and it says level, I have found where this point meets the uphill grade. I'll put a stake in the ground. Then, I take my A-frame level back here, and I start tracing the contour line in the same direction for the same distance back and forth, and I put a few stakes in the ground. I bring my, my fill right to the base of that stake, and I'm going to get a perfectly level terrace. It's that simple, isn't it? That really, really cool. Now, I can then begin over the years continuously adding mulch up here, and as I add mulch and I build my topsoil, the terrace actually continues to grow backwards into the slope. Now, let's talk about some similarities here with swales and terraces. What this is going to do is act like one really big, flat swale in a way. As water comes down, it's going to be coming downgrade, downgrade, it hits this level spot. It begins to soak back passively into the terrace. But the, the land itself still lets the water continue to flow down. The water begins to soak in. If it does exceed the capacity of the, the terrace and the subsurface to uh, absorb everything, Eventually, it starts to run off of the terrace, but if it's a 40-foot long terrace, just like a swale sill, it's like a 40-foot long sill. It's all level and all sheets evenly across. No erosion, plus the water's filtering down through the rocks, continues down great, and if we've done our job right, where does it end up? Our next terrace. So we can do this and put in annual garden systems. Again, a 4-foot bed, a 2-foot path, a 4-foot bed and they go up to another set of terraces. They don't have to be blocks, they can just be in the ground, right? But you just have the dimensions for that. Or we can build food, uh, a forest structure here. You know, if we, have, if we happen to have a slope working this way, and our sun's this way in the sky back here, I can put large trees, small trees, bushes, shrubs, vines, herbaceous layer off of this, just like a swale system. So which one do I do? It all depends. Do I have a lot of rocks? Do I have a modest slope? Um, you know, what do I want to accomplish? How big is the area I'm working in? Uh, how much equipment do I have? You know, do, can I put in a kilometer of swales in a day with a giant excavator? Or am I dealing with small equipment or hand shovels? It all depends on what you're working on and what you want as a designer your end goal to meet. So, there you go. That's the basics of using a rock to create terraces and get the level. Again, the key is pick a high line for your, for your fill. Make it lower. You don't want it to the top of the rocks. You want a little bit below. You want some what you call freeboard there. You want some space to continuously add mulch and things like that and build it up over time. Take a level line back to the end. Mark your spot of level so you're at the same height here and there. Take your A-frame level and mirror this contour. Fill back to it. You got a level swell, uh, level terrace. Uh, now I'm gonna, you know, uh, we're gonna wrap this lesson here. I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna give you a way to turbocharge this, and it might even blow you away a little bit.